hello, we're, we're just talking yes. about Mary Poppins. We're talking about Mary Poppins. <laughs> you us a little off-air moment there. Now, in an era of PlayStations and virtual reality, it's likely that many children's Christmas wish lists will feature some stuff that could easily run into hundreds of pounds. And perhaps that's why a letter from uh, in a Canterbury shop window written by a Victorian schoolgirl is melting hearts. Oh, it really is, because all Marjorie was asking for was some toy ducks and chickens, a canvas stocking and a piece of ribbon for her cat called Kittykins. Her letter to Father Christmas was written in Eastbourne back in 1898. We can go to Canterbury now because Charlie Rose is at the shop where the letter is on display. And Charlie, for many people there, this has really summoned up the spirit of Christmas. It is in a city centre that's already looking pretty festive. Uh, just around there is Canterbury Cathedral and Park Street here. Doesn't it look gorgeous? We have some marvellous shop windows, actually. The George just over there. We have the American Candy Sweet Shop just there. But this over here, in this toy shop, this is the shop window that's got everyone talking because just behind the window is a letter written to Santa by a five-year-old girl from Eastbourne 120 years ago. Letters to Santa, scribbled by children and posted to the North Pole. But there's one here that's demanding closer attention, written by five-year-old Marjorie 120 years ago. Dear Father Christmas, when you come to see us on Christmas Eve, will you please bring us some little toy ducks? I think it's just um, so innocent and it's what Christmas should be really about. Small gifts um, and just the real um, sense of magic and believing in small children. You will see an extra stocking hung up this time. It's for Kitty Kins. Really heartfelt. Yeah. Um, not sure any kids today would have such simple, no. such simple wishes. It's quite nice to um, show just how children have changed over the years. It's pretty good writing for a five-year-old, isn't it? it? Really what what do you, you make of it? Were you as good as that at that age? No, and none of my grandchildren can do that at five. They can't do it at seven. <laughs> she would like a piece of ribbon and a ball. Apart from the Christmas list and an address in Eastbourne, the rest of Marjorie is a mystery. Lily's dad found the letter hidden inside a book from a charity shop. Lily now wants to find out who Marjorie was and track down any members of her family. My dad did a little bit of research and he tried to find the house um, and it looks as though it's a completely different house as to what was there. So he assumes that it was bombed in the First World War or something like that, but obviously we don't know. But it'd be wonderful to find out. Everyone keeps coming in saying, is it for sale, like things like that. And we're like, no, it's not, because it belongs, it belongs to her. So it would be absolutely lovely just to, and such a nice story to, for Christmas as well, to get it reunited with their ancestors. And perhaps they might help unwrap the life of this little girl at Christmas. With love and kisses, from both of us, your loving Marjorie. Now, in the past hour, someone has very kindly tweeted me. Uh, they say they've checked the 1901 census in Eastbourne and tell me that Marjorie's full name is Marjorie Pennington. So perhaps the mystery of who wrote that letter to Santa uh, more than 120 years ago has finally been solved. Oh, Charlie, thank you. It'd be great if somebody could get in touch. Yeah, Mar Marjorie Pennington had lovely handwriting, didn't, didn't she? she? Didn't she?